Hello there. What's happening guys? So most of my videos are about bachelor level degrees. These are the four year ones. But in this video, we're gonna switch it up a little bit and talk about master's level degrees, which generally take around six years. Now I have to warn you from a personal finance perspective, master level degrees are going to be pretty expensive, much more expensive than the four year counterparts. It's not uncommon at all to see schools charging over $50,000 a year. And I've talked about why this is in other videos. I've explained why graduate level degrees are so much more expensive. So getting any graduate level degree like a master's or a doctorate is like playing the game of loans on veteran difficulty. A lot of the time getting a master's degree is not going to be worth it and a much better investment is for you to gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. Now with that being said there are some cases where getting a master's level degree can be a great investment and I went all the way through the system all the way from undergraduate to getting a doctorate so I know the pros and cons of getting a graduate level degree. Now on this list we're going to talk about some of the best master's degrees out there. And by the end of the video, you're gonna have all of the knowledge that took me all of those years in order to acquire, and you're gonna be able to make a good decision on whether you should get a master's level degree or not. Number nine on the list is going to be college professor. Now it might be a little bit hard for you to become a college professor with just a master's level degree, but you can still actually become a professor at some of the smaller colleges or the community colleges. Now you can expect to have a 1.8 debt to income ratio if you go this route. Now what I mean by debt to income ratio is if the average income for a college professor is $100,000, that means you're going to on average take out about $180,000 in order to get there. There's not a lot of great data out there when it comes to graduate level degrees just because not a lot of people get them. And so I took this data from Student Loan Planner, which is a company that basically helps people who are in a lot of debt get out of debt. From all of my research, I found that they had the best data and it might be a little bit high in my opinion. I think the debt to income ratio is probably a little bit high because the people that would seek out the guidance of someone like Student Loan Planner are probably the ones that are the deepest in debt. So keep that in mind while you're watching this video. But overall, I think it's pretty accurate to compare them to other degrees. Now, college professors make around $79,000 a year on average. There is 1.3 million jobs available and it's growing at 11%. That is much faster than average. Now with a master's level degree, you'll likely make less than the $79,000 a year that's listed. Additionally, it can be very difficult for you to get into academia, especially depending on what type of professor you want to become. Think about it, a professor will probably teach hundreds if not thousands of students every single year on any given subject. How many of those students will be able to become professors themselves? Not very many. And especially if you're going for a degree where there's not that many job prospects outside of becoming a professor, it can be very competitive and difficult to get to that level. And many people end up going into academia and realize later on the line that it looks a lot like a pyramid scheme. And by that, I mean the ones that make a really good amount of money are the ones that are at the very top and everybody else kind of tries to get to their level, but they usually never get there. So you basically got teachers teaching teachers how to teach teachers how to teach teachers and so on. And if you don't believe me, check out the subreddit r slash grad school where they talk about this all the time. I'll read a couple comments from this. One of the funniest, most depressing parts of this sub is how many of us have independently come to the conclusion that academia is a pyramid scheme with 100 upvotes. Still, this isn't one of the worst on the list. There are others that are much, much worse. And depending on what type of professor you want to become, this can still be a good opportunity. If you're able to make it to professor and you get what's known as tenure, that can be really sweet and you can be pretty much set for life. But it really depends on your goals, so just make sure that you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Being a professor is pretty cool. A lot of people will look up to you like you're some kind of 2,000 year old Jedi master. But unfortunately, you don't get to have a cool lightsaber like this one. Actually, this is just a thermos that I got when I visited the Amazon Go store that has no employees in Seattle. Number eight on the list is going to be a master's level science degree. So this is basically gonna be any science related degree where you go on to get a master's. So biology or chemistry would be two really common ones, for instance. Now, don't get me wrong. The skills that you learn in science are amazing and you can go on to do amazing things for the world, but there's a dark side to getting these degrees. In fact, the dark side of the force is a path way to many abilities some consider to be unnatural.
No, but really not all STEM degrees are considered to be equal. And that's why I actually separated the science part of the STEM degrees. The other three are technology, engineering, and mathematics. Now it's hard to say what the debt to income ratio is here, but overall, I think science degrees are a little bit overrated. They get bunched together with the other STEM degrees. And in my opinion, they aren't as good. And this is another one where many people end up going to grad school because they can't find a good job with just a bachelor's level degree. And then there's a lot of stories with people still not being able to get a job with a master's degree and then they have to go on and get their PhD. This is exactly what happened to one of my friends who got a biology undergraduate degree. She was planning on going to med school, that kind of fell through, and so she got her master's, still couldn't find a great job, and so she went back, ended up getting her PhD. So for instance, if you want to become a biochemist, if that's your passion in life, they generally have to get a doctoral level degree. And when you do that, you can make $94,000 a year, there's 30,000 jobs available, and it's growing at 6%, which is as fast as average. So so if you plan far ahead, you can make these degrees work, but in my opinion, you should probably go for a degree where you can get a job with just a bachelor's level you know, major. And the reason for that is because plans change. You don't wanna be planning like 10, 12 years in the future because something could happen. You could meet someone, you get married, you have a child, or you get a really good opportunity and you have to drop out of school. There's all kinds of things that could happen in the next decade. So I prefer going for degrees where you can get a job with a four-year degree. And then if you want to, you can go back and you know do a six year or maybe a doctoral level degree later on. Number seven on the list is going to be occupational therapist. And they basically help people who are injured to fulfill their daily routines and roles. Like when you get your hand chopped off in a lightsaber battle and you have to improvise. Now this one has a really nasty 3.2 to one debt to income ratio. That is bad news. So generally speaking, when it comes to debt to income ratio, you wanna keep it below two to one. Three to one is super, super high. It's a little bit different if you're making a lot of money. Like let's say you're a medical doctor, you're making $500,000 a year. If you've got a two to one debt to income ratio, that's not a big deal because you can pay it off really quickly because you have more of what's known as disposable income. So it only takes X amount of money to live on every year. And then the more money you have after that is what's known as disposable income. So doctors are able to pay off those student loans even if they have a ton of them. So a 3.2 to one debt to income ratio is pretty scary unless you're making a ton of money. The numbers on this one are relatively good though, and so that's why I put it on the list. You're making $84,000 a year, there's 133,000 jobs available, and it's growing at 18%, which is much, much faster than average. This one also has one of the highest job satisfaction or meaning scores out of all the different careers and degrees that I've looked up. For instance, its meaning score on pay scale is 89%, which is like way above average, even for a healthcare degree which generally they have higher than average meaning scores and job satisfaction scores, that 89% is still super high. And this is probably because of the fact that you get to work with patients who are injured and you get to see them all the way through their recovery to where they've pretty much recovered uh, all the way or most of the way. And that can be extremely rewarding. Whereas there's a lot of healthcare careers where you know you do your part and you never get to actually see the outcome because that would happen you know months down the line. So as long as you're smart about it and you don't go to one of those you know mill school that just churn out students that charge over $50,000 a year, you should be okay. Go to the cheapest possible school that you can because I'm telling you, it's probably not going to make any difference whatsoever if you go to the best school versus going to the cheapest school. As long as it's accredited, you always want to make sure that it's accredited no matter what. Number six on the list is going to be speech language pathologist. And this is another one in the medical field. They basically help people who have speech disorders or swallowing disorders overcome their disabilities. You have failed me for the last time. And if you've ever seen the movie, The King's Speech, this is basically what the doctor in that movie did. He helped the king overcome his stuttering disorder. Now they do have a pretty nasty 2.7 to one debt to income ratio, and that is on the higher side. You can expect to make around $79,000 a year. It's gonna have about 153,000 jobs available, and it's growing at an amazing 27%, which is much, much faster than average. You'll notice that a lot of these healthcare related degrees are always growing extremely fast, and that's because there's always going to be demand for healthcare professionals. That's why there's some of the best degrees out there and they're ones that I recommend quite often. So the pay isn't great, but overall this is another one that is a pretty good choice. And with that much demand, you can expect the pay to get higher in the future. Overall, as long as you don't go to one of those mill schools that charge you well over $50,000 a year, you should be okay. Number five on the list is going to be a master's in business administration. So this was one of the toughest ones for me to rank, to be honest with you, because there's just so many different things to talk about here. There's a ton of MBA programs 
programs out there, it's almost like you can get an MBA in a cracker box these days. And this has decreased the worth of the degree, in my opinion, by quite a bit. Now, with that being said, when you get an MBA in combination with another degree, for instance, that can be a signal to owners and hiring managers out there that you are someone who wants to take on leadership responsibility and maybe a managerial role. I talked about this before, but leadership and management is one of those skills that's extremely highly coveted out on the job market. You always see manager positions paying way more than the uh, normal counterpart positions. And so getting an MBA in the right situation can be worth it. Number four on the list is going to be a master's level TIM degree. And by that, I mean technology, engineering, and mathematics. Now it's hard to say what the debt to income ratio will be here, but they can definitely be worth it. Because of the technical skills that you tend to have to have in technology, engineering, and mathematics, there are quite a few careers out there that prefer someone who has a master's or even a doctoral level degree. Not to say that you couldn't learn this on your own, but it would be much more difficult for you to learn it without having a professor or some people to guide you. These degrees also tend to be highly respected on the job market, so even if you don't end up going into that specific career path or that specific industry, like if you get a physics degree and you don't become a physicist, your degree is still highly respected by all kinds of different businesses and industries out there. And so you'll see a lot of people who get physics degrees who end up becoming software engineers, for instance. So if you hire an engineer, you kind of know what you're getting as a hiring manager or an owner. You're getting someone who's very smart and very hardworking. So it's gonna be different depending on what degree you go into and a lot of other different factors, but this one can sometimes be worth it to get a master's level degree. One example that I'll put as number three on this list actually, just because it gets mentioned so often in my comments, is going to be data science. So data science is all about the processes, uh, methods, algorithms, etc., that are involved in managing and collecting digital data. And data science is complicated enough that many of the people who go into it do need to get a master's level degree in order to find proper employment. It's a relatively new field, but it has a ton of opportunity. You can become a computer and information research scientist, for instance. They get paid around $122,000 a year. There's 31,000 jobs available, and it's growing at 16%, which is much faster than average. And as you see, it does generally require a master's level degree. Number two on the list is going to be physician assistant, and this is another one of my favorites on the entire list. Physician's assistants, or PAs, are basically like mini doctors, and they do a lot of the same things that medical doctors would do, and they practice under one. They don't have nearly the amount of stress to deal with, though. They have a 2.1 to 1 debt to income ratio, which isn't too bad. Again, I think this data that was collected is a little bit on the high side, just because of the fact that the types of people that would sign up for, you know, loan help would probably be the types of people who took out a lot more than they should have. They make $112,000 a year. There are 118,000 jobs available, and it's growing at an astonishing 31%. I think that's the highest on this entire list. That is just incredible. That means there is a ton of demand out there for physician assistants. So these are incredible numbers to say the least. And with that healthy six figure salary, you should be able to pay off your loans. Just make sure again, that you don't go to a super expensive school, apply to the schools that are reasonable. Number one on the list is going to be nurse practitioner. This is one of my favorite degrees, one of my favorite careers to pursue. They're very similar to physicians you know, medical doctors because they can prescribe and they can diagnose. But again, they don't have nearly as much responsibility unless they want to. With a lot of different medical professions, you can kind of pick your own hours. If you want to just work 40 hours a week, you can do that. And if you want to work up to 80 hours a week, you can do that as well. This one has a 1.3 to 1 debt to income ratio, which isn't bad at all. That's actually the lowest on the entire list out of all of the graduate level master's degrees. And nurse practitioners make around $115,000 a year. There's 240,000 jobs available and they're growing at 26%, which is much faster than average. These are incredible stats to say the least. Uh, this is a great one. I'd say it's pretty much tied with PA, but it, it seems on this list that the debt to income ratio is a little bit lower. And so I, that's why I put them as number one. Thanks for watching my video, guys. I've made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have.